We have been talking about press and shrink fits, and I have just presumed that you understand that we can use thermal expansion to expand the dimensions of the collar and then slide that collar over the shaft. We have to talk about this a little bit first. Imagine we have a shaft of length L and diameter D aligned along the x-axis with the coordinate system shown right here. Now, if we increase the temperature of that shaft, we know that the shaft is going to expand. It's going to expand in the length direction by an amount delta L and in the diameter direction by an amount delta D. These differences in dimension compared to the initial dimensions represent a thermal strain. And the magnitude of that thermal strain is going to depend upon the temperature difference between our initial state and our final state. And so that thermal strain is measured as a proportion of that temperature difference using the thermal expansion coefficient. Now, if we had a shaft, this is supposed to represent a shaft right here, of length L and diameter D, I know that if I heat it up, those dimensions are going to change. And so if I were to heat it up, it would expand in diameter, as shown here, and it would expand in length, as shown here here. The expansion in length is delta L. The expansion in diameter is going to be delta D. So the thermal strain in the length direction is delta L over L, and it's got to be simply proportional to the change in temperature. In this case, with the coordinate system I have drawn, that thermal strain is an epsilon xx. And that epsilon xx then is just the coefficient of thermal expansion times the change in temperature delta T. If we constrained the bar so that we didn't allow it to grow in length, or if you imagine we push it back to its original length, what magnitude stress is required to push it back to its original length? Well, the magnitude of that stress would simply be the elastic modulus times the thermal strain, which gives us this equation right here. The amount of stress to keep it in its original dimensions when exposed to a temperature change delta T is compressive, there's the negative sign, and it's minus E times alpha delta T. Table 3.3 3 lists coefficients of thermal expansion, both using Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature measurements. Well, now that you know a little bit about that, let's consider the shrink fit of a steel collar onto a solid steel shaft where I have the dimensions shown. That is, I have a solid steel shaft here, and I want to slip a collar over here onto that shaft. The shaft has diameter 2.002 inches. The collar has an inner diameter of 2 inches and an outer diameter of three inches. So the difference in diameters, if I try to try to slip that collar onto that shaft, then I am going to have to overcome a diametral interference of 0.002 inches. If I looked at it as a radial interference, it would simply be half the diametral, so we would be at 0.001 inches. Now I'm going to need to know the elastic modulus, which is given here. If I want to calculate that pressure, I'm going to have to use an equation from the book. This is the shrink fit pressure in terms of the elastic modulus here in the numerator. The radial interference, because I'm measuring things in radius here. So I need all of these inputs, R outer, R inner, capital R, which is the ostensible interface between the shaft and the collar. So I know that the radius is 1.001 inches, but my capital R, I'm just going to write it as one inch because the 0.001 isn't going to change things very much. It's not going to have a big effect in this term. The inner radius is zero because the shaft is solid. The outer radius is the outer radius of the collar. That's 1.5 inches. I take all of that info and plug it into the pressure equation, this simple equation here with everything entered, and I end up with a pressure of 8.33 kpsi. That's my shrink fit pressure when I allow this pair, shaft and collar, to reach thermal equilibrium. Now I want to ask what the heck is the tangential stress or hoop stress in the shaft, and what is the tangential or hoop stress in the collar? So in order to do that, I have to go back to some equations in the book. So if I go back to my equations in the book, I find that the hoop stress for the inner cylinder, and in this case that's the shaft, at the interface 
R equal to capital R, that is the nominal interface between the shaft and the collar, is given by this equation here. Well, in that equation, the inner radius of the inner shaft is zero, and so it doesn't matter what this R is, those terms cancel, and we're left with the hoop stress in the shaft being equal to minus P, which means we have a compressive 8.33 kpsi hoop stress in the shaft. The hoop stress in the collar would be given by this equation here, here, where in this case the outer radius is 1.5 inches, the nominal radius is 1, and the pressure is what we already calculated at 8.33. When we solve that equation, we find that the hoop stress in the collar is 21.7 kpsi, and it is tensile. So if we were to look at shaft and the collar, and we were to remove a little materials element from the shaft at the outer boundary and from the collar at the inner boundary at that nominal interface. We could look at the stress state that's developed. We're going to ignore the stress coming out of the page, but we have in the plane of the collar, we have a tensile hoop stress of 21.7 kpsi and a radial compressive stress of 8.33 kpsi. On the shaft, we end up with a hydrostatic stress state of 8.33 kpsi. Now, given what you know about shear stresses, if these are made of the same materials, where are you most likely to find yield? If you think about that for a minute, this stress state over here is the one that's much more likely to generate a high enough shear stress to give rise to yield. We want to design this interface so that it doesn't yield, but this is the side that matters to us. Over here on the hydrostatic, we're going to suppress yield. It's a point in more space, so we don't have to worry much about the shaft. In fact, we will get plastic deformation, if we ever do get it, in the collar.